you, I didn't get one. Uh, you can pass them out later. So um, I do love museums. And Dell asked me to talk a little bit about the Horn Museum of Art, where I was director for 16 years until fairly recently. But we have a, great, a lot of great museums in the Tampa Bay area, as you know. And I hope you support them all and visit them often. Since this is an issues-based forum, I thought a little bit in preparation for my talk about some of the issues that art museum professionals are grappling with these days. I don't have to lay awake at night worrying about these things anymore since I'm not a director, but I still think about them a lot. One of those is, um, how do museums remain relevant in a digital age when people can look up any work of art, practically any or of a historical artifact, research any subject online? What is it about our museums and galleries that makes people want to come and have an authentic, first-hand experience with the work of art? And how do we um, ensure that that remains the case? Another issue has to do with demographics. As you know, we read all the time, um, minorities in our country are becoming really the majority. We have immigrants from all over the world. Um, they may not see themselves reflected in the exhibits and collections of our museums. The same is true, alas, of our own African American, Native American, even Asian American citizens. They may not see their, their self, themselves and their issues reflected in our museums. Historically, museums have kind of veered toward focusing on European and American, Caucasian people of wealth. <laughs> and in recent decades, that has certainly been changing a lot, but we still have a long way to go. So how can we be relevant for all of our citizens in our community, not just a certain group? And finally, how do we deal with censorship? This is not a threat anymore, it's a reality. The things that museums and artists would like to explore and do explore about structural racism, identity, sexual identity, even climate change, many of those topics have become dirty words for our, some of our politicians, in, especially in the state of Florida, and we're being censored. So to what extent do we willingly self-censor to protect our funding and our very existence. This is a critical issue, and that's why it's important to vote. <laughs> um, but let me tell you a little bit about the harm. I would like to know how many of you have actually visited the harm. Yay, that's a lot of people. But there's still at least half of you who haven't yet visited the harm. <laughs> Thank you, Dale told me it was one of the best museums in Florida, so I couldn't agree more. Um, if you went to the University of Florida before 1990, there was no Art Museum of Art. That's when the museum opened, and so it's 33 years old. If you want to visit the Harn, I can assure you that if you time it right with the traffic, you can get there in two hours from here, <laughs> so you can make a day trip. Or if you want to go to Gainesville for the weekend, there's a lot to do right next door to the Harn Museum of Art is another wonderful museum, the Florida Museum of Natural History, which is well worth a visit too. And there are other things to do, I can tell you later. Um, if you're going on I-75 toward Atlanta, just veer off 10 minutes over to the museum. There's plenty of places to park. You can spend a couple of hours looking at art, have some lunch, get back on the highway, and continue your journey. So please visit the barn. It is one of the larger museums in the state of Florida, and I, I just want to give you a little perspective because it surprises people. The museum is right now 110,000 square feet. They're getting ready to add another 20,000 square foot wing. Um, so it's considerably larger than the Tampa Museum of Art or the Museum of Fine Arts in St. Pete. There's a lot to see there. One of the, um, by the way, the collection is about 13,000 objects growing steadily and normally five to 10% of those objects are on view at any given time. And they change, you know, so you can see different things, different occasions. People always want to know, what does the Horn collect? If I go there, what am I going to see? Um, there are five main collecting areas for the museum, and each one has dedicated gallery space. Some have entire wings, 
The Asian collection has an entire wing with several galleries, an Asian water garden, and a Zen garden. So a lot to see if you like Asian art. And it's from Neolithic to contemporary Asian art. Um, let's see, the contemporary collection also has its own wing. And um, that is a global collection that includes contemporary artists work from all over the world. There's photography, which also is global in scope. And then, um, let's see, African art has a gallery, and African art has always been important for the uh, current collection. And then lastly, um, what we call the modern collection, that confuses people sometimes. What's the difference between modern and contemporary? Well, at the heart, we define it this way. Modern is anything in the collection from approximately 1850 to 1950. So it starts with Impressionism, kind of broke the mold on academic uh, painting in the mid-19th century, and we're seen as early modernist, and then all the way to World War II. Contemporary art is anything after World War II to the present that's going to be shifting as we move into the 21st century. Um, there are also changing exhibition galleries at the Horn. Um, there's always at least a couple of changing shows on view. Um, really more if you count the changes in the Asian gallery and the contemporary gallery. The big main exhibition hall right now has a, a show of African American photography. It's called Posing Beauty in African American Culture. I haven't seen it yet, but I hear it's stunning. And the curator for that was a very famous photographer, scholar, and professor at NYU, Deborah Willis, who many of you will know from work. Um, and then in the other exhibition uh, space that changes, there is a selection of about 60 works of art from the collection of Sam and Robbie Vickers, the Florida Art Collection. We have a little handout um, on the desk there about the Vickers collection. This was donated to the Harn in 2020, and immediately a large selection of the paintings went on view in 2021. I would say from now on and forever, there will always be an important selection of works from the Vickers collection on view at the Harn. Right now in the um, exhibition Florida Impressions, you can see 60 or so of those works. When the new wing is constructed, among other functions, they will have a large gallery devoted to the Vickers collection so that there can always be works from the Vickers collection on exhibit. Why do you want to see the Vickers collection? Well, it's all about Florida. It's about the history of our state, the landscapes, the cities, tourism, famous individuals, the Seminole and Nikosuke, um, urbanization, the environment, every topic you can think of uh, in the history of Florida is somehow reflected in that collection, except for contemporary art. The Vickers did not collect contemporary art after around 1950, 1960. So if you want to see that, you'll just have to go to the contemporary wing and, and see work by artists from Florida and all across the country and all around the world. How am I doing? Two more minutes. Two more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in addition to the exhibitions in the uh, permanent collection galleries and the changing exhibits, of course, like all of our museums, the Harn has a lot of programs that you can see on the website. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was that um, it's open late every Thursday night. So if you time your visit to come on a Thursday, um, then you could wander around the galleries until 9 o'clock in the evening and not have to rush back. And um, on the second Thursday of every month, there's a program called Museum Nights, when not only is the museum open, but there's a lot of programming going on. There's usually music, there may be dancers performing, free food, movies, lectures, art making activities, um, gallery little things rocket blast or something, little short gallery talks all around the museum. And all of those activities are planned by University of Florida students. Um, there's a special committee, they're called the Muses, and um, they present these activities on museum nights. They're geared especially toward college and university students, but everyone in the community seems to enjoy them. So you see people of all ages there. All right, let's have a Q&A. Let's go.